Good morning and welcome to church today on this Sunday, the 1st of August. It's good to be able to come together to pray, to listen to God's Word, and to stop for a moment in our busy lives and think about ourselves and those around us. To spend some time with God, to give our lives to God, and to be able to draw strength by God's Spirit. Today many of our churches will be celebrating the Eucharist, Communion, the Mass, call it what you like, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Table. And this church is not just here on Gar, but throughout Swansea and beyond. And perhaps it will turn people's thinking to what sustains them, what strengthens them. So many people come forward to receive the bread of Holy Communion. And a little bit more about that in our service this morning. Today's prayers we're going to take from a book called Bare Feet and Buttercups. It's a lovely book of prayers and reflections that comes from the Iona community. And today we're going to be looking at summertime. It's August the 1st, we're in the midst of the summer holidays. Life is buzzing around us as people try to recapture some normality, as people who can't go abroad look to come to Gawa and other places to soak up the sunshine when it's not raining and to find peace. And relaxation. So let's begin with some silence this morning and then go straight into our prayers. God of golden fields and blue skies, thank you for summer. God of white waves and wet pebbles, thank you for summer. God of ripe fruit and meadow sweet, thank you for summer. Thank you for the warmth, the beauty and wonder. Thank you for life. As I said, there are so many people around us at the moment who have been on holidays or are on holidays, but for some the holidays are yet to begin. And I wonder if we've ever given some thought to how we prepare for our summer holidays. Yes, there's the washing, there's the packing, there's making sure the car is right, checking the tickets, all these things that we make sure of before we go. But what about ourselves? Are we holiday ready? We might think, oh, I need a holiday. I'm worn out, I'm exhausted. I've done too many Zoom calls. But what about our bodies, our minds, our spirits? Let's pray and reflect upon that now in this next prayer. Summer is a time for sleep, not the sleep of hibernation, hiding away from the world, but the sleep of refreshment, long, relaxing sleep that puts the past to rest, that restores the mind and soul, that heals the tired body, that nurtures the future, salvation through sleep. Our Lord Jesus Christ also needed that summer, that salvation of sleep. He used to go apart from his disciples to pray. There were times when he too was tired. And it's an example that he has set to us all. Even children, perhaps children best of all, capture that essence of relaxation, of summer, better than us adults. A little boy named Paul, aged eight, wrote this. People go to work, to get some money, to go on holiday, to have fun, to go to the seaside, to get shells. Simple. Only life was indeed that simple. Well, let's now turn to our reading from today, from John's Gospel. O Lord, open your Gospel to us this day, that we may hear it, receive it, understand it, and live it. Amen. It's entitled, The Bread of Heaven. When the people saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, 
not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labour for the food which perishes, but of the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because the God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them and said to them, This is the work of God, and you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, what we may see and believe you? What works will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave him bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many years ago, for quite a few years, I worked as a manager with Tesco's, the supermarket, long before the days of 24-hour opening of replenishing the shelves overnight. This was the days when food would arrive, it would go on the shelves, and it would be bought. Mostly, sometimes, in the same day. Bread was one of our biggest commodities. We always used to sell bread a little bit cheaper because that would draw people into the store. And the bread aisle was always at the front of the store. Good reason for that. Why? Because people came for bread. Also, the smell of bread baking in the bakeries as well was pushed in that direction. So people would have that wonderful, aromatic smell of baking bread as they came through the door. Whenever there was snow forecast, you could guarantee that before you opened the shop door in the morning, there'd be a queue outside of people waiting to panic by. And what was the first thing they'd go for? Yes, you got it, the bread on the shelves. How many of us have seen pictures in the great snows of 1980 and also, I believe, in 2010 of people queuing outside bakeries? Although perhaps by 2010, a lot of people were baking at home. How many of us during the pandemic saw the pictures of bread literally disappearing off the shelves as people panic by in case things got worse than they were? Bread is a staple of life. We love it. We eat so many varieties of it. Indeed, you go to your supermarket or wherever you buy your bread, your local bakery, and you will see all shapes, all sizes, all flavours, all tastes catered for. Your breakfast rolls, your croissants, your brioche, your bloomers, whatever. I'm hungry already talking about it. But back in the time of Jesus, bread was not available as readily as it is today. It had to be prepared. It had to be ground. It had to be baked. And it wasn't the same as what you and I have. Indeed, these people now who are questioning Jesus have just witnessed him do one of the greatest miracles of all, the feeding of the 5,000, you know, the, the loaves that were multiplied, the fishes that were multiplied, and yet they still wanted a sign. They still wanted Jesus to show them, to prove to them. Jesus, the physical sustainer, is now saying, I'm also the spiritual sustainer. In the time of Jesus, bread took some time to prepare. It was treasured, it was savoured, it was food for the journey. What Jesus is saying to them in this reading is treasure and savour me, for I have been sent by the Father. I am that food for the journey. I am the spiritual bread of life. That bread which we receive at the Lord's table during the communion, the Eucharist, the Mass, the bread of life that Jesus gave to his disciples at the Last Supper, symbolic yet also deeply meaningful. Bread is something that we all enjoy, our buttered toast, the mouth-watering smell as it slowly toasts on the toaster. Or if, like me, you can remember as a child sticking bread on a toasting oven, a toasting fork and putting it to the fire, all evokes memories. Jesus is creating for these pictures another memory 
to give to the people. The picture of Jesus being sent from God, not as a physical sustainer, but as a spiritual sustainer, a nourisher of the soul, one who promises everlasting life, one who promises something beyond the moment and something everlasting. The bread in our bread bin can go off. The bread in our bread bin can readily be eaten. The bread on our plate goes and perhaps we're left wanting more. And Jesus is showing that this bread is temporary and whilst it may satisfy us now, we will be hungry again tomorrow. In this reading we are reminded that Jesus is a lifelong, life-giving sustainer of the soul, the permanent bread of heaven, the one who promises so much more than what we sometimes expect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some more facts. Let us pray. Life-giving, life-loving God. From the falling rain to the laughter of children, your glory is everywhere heard and seen. The blackbird sings it and the rose is scented with it. All around us the earth pulsates with it. It is your glory, the heartbeat of the universe. Life-giving, life-loving God, whose energy and zest for creative action are reflected in our lives, in our work, in our study, in science, music and the arts in play and in worship. All around us people are living and dreaming, hoping and working, showing their image of your divine passion and purpose. Life-giving, life-loving God, we offer to you the images that we have seen of this world that disturb us, that upset us. But as we sit at home or enjoy holidays together, the world still turns over. People die, people are sick, people kill. Politicians raise their voice and rattle their sabres, and the world turns on. Prick our conscience, Lord, that we may do something in this world of need. You are the giver. You are the lover. You are the saviour of life. You are the bread of heaven. Come, Lord, this day. Strengthen us to play our part. Help us to be one in your story of creation as it continues to unfold to work with Jesus in his kingdom and to do the work of Jesus in his kingdom. Help us to give of ourselves and in doing so to discover our gifts. Help us to bring life to others and find a reason to let our hearts dance for joy in a world that is sometimes dark. Help us each day to receive and to give our daily bread, the bread that sustains us and the bread that is always with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And Jesus said to them, He who comes down to me receives the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. We give thanks for the rhythm of life and the seasons that go around us, for all that grows, blossoms and fades, for the seeds that are buried and spring again, for the constant renewal of life from the earth. We celebrate this summertime. We celebrate the flowering of hope that you have brought us, Lord Jesus. We give thanks for the fruits of the earth. May we be part of that fruit that blossoms and gives so much to others. We praise for the goodness of the growth that we see around us in the fields and in the hearts of others. May we grow, grow into your love, grow into your goodness day by day. Amen. God's blessing be upon you this day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. If you're on holidays, enjoy them. If you're going on holidays, prepare for them. Enjoy them and be one with yourself and one with the Lord that loves you. Receive the bread of life. May the bread of life sustain you for the journey ahead. Amen.